Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over part two of applying the fundamental identities. So for this example, let's consider the following problem. Um, let's say we were to find secant theta if sine theta is equal to three root six over 11 and theta is in quadrant two. Okay, so in this problem, we're going to be starting from sine theta, that's the given um, trig function, and we are to determine what secant theta is. So we're going from sine all the way to secant theta. Now we have your fundamental trig identities right here for reference. The goal is to see if we can first of all find one identity that has only sine and secant in it. If we can find out an identity that has just sine and secant in it, then that identity will be sufficient to find secant given sine. Okay? So let's take a look at our identities. Reciprocal identity, this has sine, no secant in there. This has secant, no sine. We have secant, no sine. If you look at your quotient identities, this has sine, no secant. Over here, sine, no secant. This has secant, no sine. And then there's no need to even look at the co-function or order even identities since we're not dealing with negative angular values. So from what we see here, we cannot go directly from sine to secant. In identity terms, we do not have an identity that has just sine and secant. So what does that mean? We have to make a detour. We have to go to secant by using another connecting trig function. So which trig function can connect sine and secant together? That's the question. Now let's take a look at these two identities first. Let me erase that, 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 and that right here. The reciprocal identity can take us from secant to cosine, okay? Right there. And I'm actually going to be using this variation right here because you always want to put in uh, where you're going. So this reciprocal trig identity can take us from cosine to secant. And this Pythagorean identity right here can take us from uh, sine to cosine. So if we use this one first, it will take us from sine to cosine. And then we use this one secondly, that will take us from cosine to secant. Okay, so these are the two identities, fundamental identities that will help us to find secant given sine. Okay, so let's go ahead and indicate our plan here. We're going to go from sine to cosine first. And then from cosine, we're going to proceed to our destination, which is secant. So first formula that we're going to be using Formula one is the Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. That'll take us from sine to cosine. And next, we're going to be using the um, reciprocal identity that'll take us from cosine to secant. So secant theta is going to simply be the reciprocal of cosine, one over cosine theta. Okay, so that's how we're going to solve the problem. Now let's start with our first connection. We want to find what? What are we looking for first? We want to find cosine theta. We're going to be using the identity, the Pythagorean identity sine square theta plus cosine square theta equals one. How are we going to use this? We're going to substitute the value of sine, 3 root 6 over 11, into this equation. 
and sol4 cosine. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we have 3 root 6 over 11. That's the value of sine. That's squared plus cosine squared theta equals 1. Now, how on earth do you square this radical right here? We have 3 root 6 and then 11. What you're going to do is you're going to square every single number. You're going to square 3, you're going to square root 6, and you're going to square 11. Okay, let's go ahead and square them one by one so we don't get confused. Um, 3 squared is 9 times the square root of 6 squared involves the square root and the square canceling each other out and you're left with 6. So we have 9 times 6 divided by 11 square is 121. Okay. So that plus cosine square theta gives us 1. Now the goal is to isolate uh, cosine theta. So let's simplify this. Um, fraction right here, 9 times 6 is 54, 54 over 121 plus cosine square theta is equal to 1. Now these are the steps that we're going to use to get cosine isolated. We're going to move this fraction to the right side by subtracting 54 over 121 and then we'll proceed to take the square root of both sides and that will give us um, the value of cosine theta. Okay, so let's subtract 54 over 121 from both sides. We do that and then we get cosine squared theta equals 1 minus 54 over 121. Okay, so let's carry out the subtraction of these two numbers here. Express one as a fraction. To subtract fractions, the denominators must be equal. Okay, the LCD of 1 and 121 is 121, so we times this by 121 top and bottom. So we now have cosine square theta equals 121 over 121 minus 154 over uh, 121. Actually, it's not 154, it's just 54. Okay, now let's carry out the subtraction. Um, 121 minus 54 is 67, so we have cosine square theta equals 67 over 121. Now to get rid of this square we'll use the inverse of square which is square root so we take the square root of the left side, square root of the top and square root of the bottom. Now that leaves us with cosine theta equals root 67 over the square root of 121 is 11. Now there's something missing here. Do you know what is missing? Anytime you take the square root of a square, you always have to introduce plus or minus. Okay? So this is what cosecant theta is. is either plus or minus root 67 over 11. I'm not going to bother myself determining the sine of cosine because this is not what I'm looking for. My ultimate goal is to find the value of secant theta. That's what the question asks us to find. So what I'm going to do is continue solving, keep that plus or minus situation there, and then when I find my final trig function, its value, then I will determine what the appropriate sign is. Okay? So, so far we have, um, we're halfway to our destination, we're now at cosine. Okay? Now, the final connection is to go from cosine to secant using the reciprocal identity. So let's go ahead and write down what we are trying to do. Number two, part two, is we want to find 
secant theta using cosine. Okay, so um, the identity that we're going to be using is as follows. We're going to be using uh, the identity, the reciprocal identity, secant theta equals 1 over cosine theta. Okay, so um, let's apply it here. So secant theta is going to be um, 1 divided by uh, plus or minus root 67 over 11. Now, is there a faster way to do this? Absolutely. When you're reciprocating, you can just simply interchange the numerator and the denominator. But I want to, I'm using the identity here so you can clearly see what's going on. So you have 1 times plus or minus, you drop, change, flip, 11 over root 67. And you get this result, plus or minus 11 over root 67. So just by simply interchanging the numerator and the denominator, you can skip all the steps and end up right here. Okay, so secant theta is plus or minus 11 over root 67. Is this an acceptable answer? No. You cannot have a radical in the denominator. So let's go ahead and fix that problem. We're going to rationalize the denominator using rat 67. And that gives us plus or minus 11 rat 67 divided by 67. Now, is this an acceptable answer? The answer is no. We have to determine if secant theta is either the positive or negative. We have to pick one. What's going to help us to determine the correct sign of secant? Well, we have to consider what quadrant theta lies in, okay? So remember, all students take calculus. Quadrant 1, 2, 3. Let's take a look at what quadrant theta is in. From the problem, it's clearly indicated that theta is in quadrant number 2, okay? So theta is going to be residing right here. Now, what is the sign of secant in quadrant 2? We have S, right? S tells us that only sine and its reciprocal cosecant are, neg um, are positive here, okay? A means all of them, S means sine and cosecant. Are positive only t tan and cotangent c cosine and secant so in quadrant two since um secant is neither sine nor its reciprocal that automatically means that secant is going to be negative in this quadrant okay so our final answer secant theta is going to be negative 11 rad 67 divided by 67, okay? So there goes your final result. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. I really appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial helpful in your study of um, analytic trigonometry, do give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very valuable to us. If you have any questions or comments about the contents of this presentation, just place your questions in the comment section below and uh, we'll be more than glad to respond. We always update videos to our um, YouTube page on a regular basis, so do subscribe to our channel for updates to other tutorials such as this. More clips can be found on mathgodserve.com. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.